Hey guys, how's it going? In a previous video we changed the dash clock displays from miles into kilometers. Now we're going to change the segment display from miles also into kilometers. <laughs> So the next thing I want to do is change the display here from miles into kilometers. So with VCDS you cannot alter your mileage. That is illegal and you can't be done. But what you can do is convert this number into kilometers and make the clocks only count in kilometers, which is correct. So we convert this number into kilometers. We'll also be changing this from miles per gallon into liters per 100 kilometers. And this one will stay the same as 24 hour clock and this one will stay the same as day, month, year. But what we can do is go into VCDS, we go into coding. Now this is the number that displays. So this is an important number. So 05 is the first two. And we can see that zero or the, the first two are question marks. So you add them together. So to get to five, Obviously you see that five is not on the list. So what you do, you take number four because it is a manual transmission. So yes, so number four, and it has all wheel drive, so one. So four and one is five. That's where the five comes from, so it's zero five. Next one down is the countries. So this is for your mileage. We just look at the next one. So it's either a four or six cylinder. So you see the second four in. So that's a four as well, so it is a four cylinder engine. So if you had a VR6, it just means that your rev counter would count six cylinders rather than four cylinders. And the last one is the type of engine. So do you have a turbocharger or do you have an NA engine? So this is a turbocharger. That's why we have number four at the very end as well. So you can see it's either a two or a four. So we have a four. Okay, so this number here. This is the one we're looking for to change. So we can say we're in Germany or we can say we're in Great Britain or we can say we're in Japan. I think if you turn it to Australia, it just goes upside down like that. So I think that's the only thing that the Australian one does. Um, rest of the world, right hand drive, rest of the world, left hand drive and Japan, right hand drive. So I'm not really sure what the real difference is between every country is. I think a lot of it is just marketing as well that you know you're very proud of your country so you'll have it from Germany because you are a German citizen and it's a German built car where the rest of the world left and drive is the exact same it just means when you scan it you're either proud to be German or you're proud to not be German I think that's really it same with the rest of the world so like left or right hand drive cars they'll be sold to Great Britain but if you're not British be the rest of the world which is like Irish or any other country that drives on the right hand side uh, Japan not really sure what the differences are but we'll go we'll go into all of them and we'll just see what each of them are so first of all we're going to zero so get rid of this four we go for a zero yes that's correct do it and we'll see the my the display change. There we go. So it's now reading kilometers. That's what my count is now in kilometers. If we convert miles into kilometers, this is also reading kilometers, and it's going to display. We burn twenty eight point two liters for every one hundred kilometers. It's not that, it's just that it was left recorded at 28 mpg and obviously when I go for a drive it'll recalibrate again. This one is stuck in 24 hour clock and the date is date, month, year. So that's safe. Let's just try a few others. So I think we might try the American one next. Which one is America? Where is it gone? America, number two. Number two. Yes. Do it. Okay. Now we're back to miles again. So I actually thought it would read in Fahrenheit, but it's actually reading in Celsius. Let's have a look at our MPG. Yeah. Uh, 
There, MPG. Oh, that's the wrong one. MPG, 28.2 M 28 MPG. And the time clock is a 12 hour time clock. So it's gone back to 9.57. And the date has gone backwards. So it's the month, the date, and the year. Because Americans read backwards. Well, you do. Okay. Let's try a different one this time. Let's try Japan. What number is Japan? Five. Well, five or nine. So we'll just try, try nine, maybe. Nine. Do it. So now we're in kilometers. The time has gone back to a 24 hour clock. The date has gone back the correct way to read it. And the count is, no, right, not that one. Is it 28 kilometers per liter? So it's a different way of counting. So this is like MPG, miles per gallon. And this time you're doing kilometers per liter, which is quite a nice way of thinking because it's, I think it's an easier way of thinking about it, but we'll try a different one again. So that's kilometers per liter. Again, kilometers over here, Celsius still, all the good stuff. Right, let's go with, let's try a different country. What do we go to this time? Um, we try the rest of the world, right hand drive, number eight. Okay, still 24 hour clock. Time and date is still correct way around. Kilometers. Okay, so get that one. Now, so this time we're reading, we're doing 28 liters for every 100 kilometers. Obviously like, it's only 28 because I haven't driven the car. As soon as I start driving the car, it'll give a, it'll recalibrate and do a correct reading, but this was, been stored from previous, no, still in the Great Britain uh, setting or miles. So that's 28 liters for every 100 kilometers. So I suppose like if you look at your fuel gauge, if you put in 55 liters, it'll work out how many liters you'll burn to do for every 100 kilometers you travel. So maybe it might be an easier way of traveling or working out I quite like the kilometers per liter. So I might go with Japan or I might go with this one here. Okay, let's try, let's try Australia. Eight, seven. Do it. I love the way like they just like are very direct. Like, do it. Yeah, I was right. It is upside down. All right guys, so I've been playing around with these clocks and I was wondering what does this symbol over here mean? So if you can scroll through it, it disappears and then it comes back. So obviously there's uh, five different settings there. What do they all mean? So I found this really handy little piece of paper and uh, onboard computer. So you can see there at the very bottom two, it means your average speed or your average fuel consumption, your driving time, fuel range, and your instantaneous fuel consumption. So obviously we're not driving at the moment, so they're all going to be a little bit of average. So we start off at the top, which was this one here. Light in here is awful. Uh, your fuel consumption. That's 16.6 .6 liters per 100 kilometers. It looks like a double dot, but it's actually an L, which is obviously my display's died a little bit. This is my fuel range. So this is how far I've been driving or how far I can go. Okay, obviously we're halfway through a tank. Well, it's currently doing a test at the moment. This is how long I've been driving for, isn't it? Yeah, driving time. Next one is gonna be your average fuel consumption. Average fuel consumption because that's what the little dot with the 
circle with a stripe through it. And that one was average speed. So obviously like I've just reset these clocks, so um, they're not gonna display that. Looking here at the side of the stock, at the very bottom it says reset. If we press that, we can reset our average MPG or liter per 100 kilometers and our average miles per hour, our average kilometers per hour. So guys, thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button over there. Leave a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. See you later. Just doing a segment test. I have no idea what that symbol means. Maybe it means poor Wi-Fi or uh, upside down Hanukkah. I don't know. Or upside down candlestick holder. But um, just something weird. Just spotted it.